are the preparations that you're putting into your prison term worthwhile or worthless? At 7.34 on Wednesday, March 30th, I just finished having dinner with a client and on the way to my car, I received a call from a defendant, soon to be prisoner, who will surrender to the federal prison camp in Fort Dix next week for 37 months. And he opened up the call very gracefully and acknowledged that he's watched scores of our videos, downloaded a copy of our book, Lessons from Prison, a shameless plug you can get for free, a white collar advice. Yet on this call, despite reading the book and watching scores of our videos, he appeared fixated and focused on things like how good is how good is the food? How comfortable will, will my bunk be? Are there weights there? I'm not so far removed from going to prison that I wasn't thinking about those things or don't think that there isn't value in those sorts of things. Yet what I tried to convey to this person was that's really worthless type planning. How, how good the food is in the commissary in the totality of your life, big deal. Are there weights? Big deal if there are weights or if there are not weight. Who cares? What matters is what would you do every day while you're, while you're in custody? So I encouraged him to transition or transform from worrying about how good the food is or how thick will his mattress be or will there be weights to what is the rest of his life going to look like because he's a convicted criminal as I understood it on this call he's a physician who's going to prison for payroll protection fraud if you were to google his name he told me it looks like or as he claimed to be Al Capone and I said do you think you're Al Capone he said of, of course not I said who are you he said I'm a father I'm a husband I'm someone that's contributed to my community I said does the government know that no does your family know that yes do you think there'd be value in letting more people know that you can contribute to your community and you're better than the bad decisions you previously made? He said, yes. I said, could you see how it could be more worthwhile to focus on rebranding, of documenting the journey, of telling the story, of articulating what it is you plan to do while you're in prison, how you'll grow, what the rest of your life will look like? Because whether on 37 months, he serves 13 months, 15 or 18 months, if he's not ready to come home, I expressed to him, in many ways, it amounts to a life sentence. And that's not a new message that I've conveyed. In myriad videos over the years, I've said, yes, I know you want the shortest sentence, but if you're not ready to come home to rebuild, if your network isn't strong, if you don't have employment opportunities, if you're not ready to articulate to a probation officer why you will, why you are worthy of more liberty on, on, on probation, that does it really matter if you got an extra month or two in the halfway house? You have a whole set of uh, you know, horribles waiting for you on the other side. So I commended him for calling and for taking action, but I reiterated to him as I reiterate to all of you, I know you want to get home and I know you're probably worried about the food and the weights and how thick your mattress is, but in the end of the day, who cares? My business partner, Michael Santos, served 26 consecutive years in prisons all across the country. If you were to call Michael, he's crazy busy doing stuff. If you picked up the phone and you, if you were to say to him, how is Fort Dick? You know what he'd say? Great. How is Florence? Great. How was Lompoc? Great. How was the penitentiary in Atlanta? Great. Why was it great? It was his mindset. He spent every moment of every day preparing for the inevitable challenges that await someone with a prison record. That's what I want all of you to think about. Do not engage in worthless prison planning that will not improve things for your family. Do not engage in worthless prison planning and obsess over things that will not contribute to the life you'd like to lead in prison. I'm not as strong as I used to be because holding this iPhone is heavy and this thing must weigh three ounces. That is embarrassing. Do not engage in worthless prison planning. Engage in worthwhile activities. How, you, how would you regrow your network? How, you, how are you preparing to live a law-abiding life on the other side? What are you doing to prove worthy of the love and support of your family? What are you doing to document to a probation officer that you're worthy of higher levels of liberty? I'm a big proponent of uh, creating a website while in custody of documenting that journey. That's how I'll close. If you're going to create a website, I had this call with someone last week, a physician in New York who wants to document the site. It's got to be worthwhile content to speak to the, to stay on the, the tone of worthwhile. It can't be high. I got up at six. I went to the chow hall. I ran three miles. I read in the library for 30 minutes. I did my job. I called home. I went to bed. If you produce worthless content every single day, you're going to get you're not gonna get many readers. It's not engaging, it's not inspiring. So if you're going to document the journey while in prison, 
make sure it's worthwhile planning. You're sharing what you're reading, what you're learning, how what you're reading will contribute to the life you'd like to lead. I hope the content you produce in prison is viewed by a case manager. In fact, when you meet with a case manager, you should walk in and print out copies of your blog. No, you don't have an iPhone in prison. No, you don't have the internet in prison, but you do have, you do have core links and you can send that email home. You can send the blog home via email. Somebody can put it on your website mail it to you, show it to a case manager so when you meet with them, you can express to them what you're learning through confinement, why you're documenting the journey and why you're working to prove worthy of uh, higher levels of liberty. If you can take that approach, you end up getting more halfway house time without asking for it. I want you to engage as I close in worthwhile, not worthless federal prison planning. I'm going home to my family. Good night.